What is an SK, seborrheic keratosis? What is that? Well, a keratosis in Latin means a rough spot, okay? Uh -huh. So there are the two major types, the actinic keratosis or precancer, and then the more common seborrheic keratosis. These are the hereditary benign spots that increase in number with birthdays and don't become malignant. <laughs> with birthdays. So as you That's get older. That's a nicer older, way of saying that they. <laughs> as, as you get older, where are they usually located? They can be anywhere on the body. And where do they look like? Is it they can not, often be one pretty. of the, they're the most common reason for a visit to the dermatologist when somebody's worried about cancer but doesn't have it. Okay, it's because they can be asymmetrical or regularly bordered or regularly colored or very dark in color. They're often bigger than six millimeters. And if, in case you didn't catch it, that was the ABCD of melanoma. So they can have a lot of the same characteristics of malignant tumors you know, growing, changing, itching, bleeding, they can do all of those. So they can share a lot of the same signs and symptoms that a melanoma has and yet be completely, totally benign. Okay. I would, is that easy? Can you feel them and sort of say, I think that's a... Well, they're that's keratosis, different. so they're a rough spot by uh -huh. definition. So they often have a velvety or scaly surface to them, especially on the trunk. On the extremities, oftentimes they'll look almost more like a drip of wax. You can tell that they have a texture to them, but it's not truly scale, per se. In general, if somebody finds a, a seborrheic keratotic lesion, um, they don't think it's all that pretty and they may want you to take it off. Do you take them, any dangers in taking them off? Um, well, you know, they, they may have reasons other than just not being pretty. Again, sometimes they will show up in really bad locations and since they're raised above the skin, they're pretty easy to traumatize and I'm not sure why, but once they get traumatized and start becoming inflamed and irritated, they'll swell and then they're just even easier to irritate. So it does end up being kind of a circular motion. So even insurance companies recognize that these can be problematic and will pay for me to treat them. So um, cryotherapy is probably the most common way to treat them. This is a cryac, okay, which usually contains liquid nitrogen, and that's the most common way to treat those. And when you spray the liquid nitrogen, what's it like? Could you spray my hand right there, just anywhere you want? There's, be no, okay. there's no liquid nitrogen in it, no, but okay. we can pretend. <laughs> so you, you spray it right there, and then it <clears throat> freezes the lesion? Yes, it does really two things. One is that it's 196 degrees below zero Celsius. Whoa. Okay, so it's going to freeze the water in the epidermal skin cells, which, you know, if you remember from chemistry, that if most things freeze, contract when they freeze, but water expands because of polar bonds, so that does bad things to your cell membranes. So it's traumatic to the cells, but it also creates a blister. Okay, and a blister is basically the epidermis lifting up off the dermis. Uh, the nice part about that is that I'm creating a blister, which is still intact skin, whereas if I cut something off, I create a wound. Okay, so ah. freezing is preferable in many cases over cutting something off because it's a safer way of treating. You don't have a risk of infection with freezing. And over, over it's the very years, minimal. It, over the years, as I've seen people come in that have been treated with the cryotherapy, the cold mm -hmm. therapy, uh, I will ask them, well, did it hurt? And mm -hmm. they say, no, nah, maybe a little sting if you want to really be a sissy. Well, it uh, depends upon what location on the body. You know, sometimes <laughs> people have had warts fr frozen on their fingertips and as a child, and they remember that as a fairly painful experience. But when you're freezing a large keratosis, separate keratosis on the back of the shoulder, you're right, it's generally not too bad.